Hey, we're still in this sermon series, and I believe this is the last week. Uh, it's these things. And if you're like me, I go around my house, and I, these things, these things, these things. Constantly goes in my mind, these things. And if you do not know where these things came from, it was from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, where Peter writes... It says, if you add to these things, to your, add to these things your faith, or your faith to these things. I'll get it right in a minute. And he lists all these different things that we've looked at over the last few weeks. We've looked at self-control and perseverance and godliness and God's goodness about his knowledge and how when we have the knowledge of the word that we are able to think. We talked about our thinking last week. And today we're going to talk about love. Now I want to warn you, and maybe that's why the enemy is fighting me so hard today. This is a different kind of message. This is not a pump you up kind of day and encourage you and tickle your feathers, so to speak. Um, but this is something that we all need to be reminded of. When people offend us, when people hurt us, uh, to let it not only flow in, but let it flow out. Uh, to not hold on to any kind of things. Uh, but remember these things uh, that we're going to talk about today. And before we do that, I want to tell you to go ahead and turn your Bibles, or you can look at the screen. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 40. And then we're also going to look at Luke chapter 17, verse 1 through 4. Are you all ready to go this morning? Say amen. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with just a little bit of your heart. No, with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Verse 40. And all the law and the prophets hang on to these commandments. Okay, everybody with me, say amen. We're going to look at Luke chapter 17, verse 1 through 4. Are you ready to go? Here we go. Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come. But woe to anyone through whom they come. It would be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. So watch yourself. Say, watch yourself. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day, Lord have mercy. And seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. Y'all all right in here already? Okay, the title of my message is, what comes in must come out. What comes in must come out. Let's pray. Father, today we ask that you would be with us. Today, God, we bind the enemy and the forces of hell in this place, God. Lord, we know that different people have been hurt, even this week, God. Different people are hanging on to hurt from years previous. Maybe it's the way you grew up in your childhood uh, that is bringing back memories and you constantly deal with that. Or maybe even today coming in this place, someone has offended you or not acknowledged you, whatever the case may be. Today, God, we say we want to open our hearts to you. Today, Lord, we say take whatever is there, God, so that your word can flow in and your word can flow out. Today, God, I pray that you would anoint me, God. I pray that you would bless Every word that comes out of my mouth, in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen. These two are the greatest commandments, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Then there's another one, that you would love your neighbor as yourself. The Lord tells us if we get these two commandments straight, then everything else will fall into place. But we got to get these two straight. That you would love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love is so important. God commands us to love him. That we would love him with all our heart, soul, and mind. Can you imagine what it would be like to go around and command people to love you? <laughs> Can you imagine what that would be like to walk into a, a room and just command people, hey, you got to love me. I think it would fix some marriages. How many of you know that? That it would solve some problems in the house. That it, it would help change relationships if you could just command people to love you. And he tells us to love him with our heart, soul, and mind. Have you ever loved anything with all your heart, your soul, and your mind? You know, I think that so many people are quick to say, I love you but don't really fully understand what that means sometimes when they tell someone, I love you. And this is what I mean by that is we go around and we tell people, oh, I just love you to death. 
until they cross us the wrong way, until they offend us and do something. Then we have this new person that comes out of us. It's just like this vulture that attacks, right? I love you, but yet when they turn around and hurt us, something comes within us and comes out of us. Not only does he tell us to not only love him with all our heart, soul, and mind, but he also tells us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Can you imagine how relationships would change if you would love people the way you love yourself? Oh, Lord Jesus, it's getting quiet in here. I think that's why the enemy's fighting me all week. He knew I was going to step on some toes this morning. Uh, what would happen if you were forgiving to them as you are with yourself? Oh, Lord Jesus. Isn't it funny how people who need forgiveness don't even give it? People need you to understand their issues, but they're unwilling to understand yours. The reality is we always want to get more than we could give. So the second scripture reminds us of that, that we love, need to love our neighbor as ourselves. You know, I think so many times that the first one's not too hard, that we love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, because we know that he's been good to us. We know all the things that God has done, and so we, it's easy sometimes to love him, right? Especially when things are going good and going like clockwork in our life, and he's blessing. Boy, we love him to death then, right? We love God. We know that he's good, but a lot of times we don't get the understanding that if we love him, and he's truly blessed us, and we, we love him, and we're spending time in his presence, then that's going to overflow out of us into other people's lives, that we will love them, that we will look past their faults, because isn't he the one who looks past our faults every single day of our life because we all have fallen short. We all do things, say things we shouldn't say, act a certain way we shouldn't act. But he says, if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. See, if we love him the way we're supposed to love him, then our heart is good. And when that is good, then we can love the neighbors as ourselves, even the ones that hurt us, even the ones who don't always do good to us, that we can love them. Why? Because we love God. See, so many people have it backwards. They only love people when they want to love them, when they're being nice to them. And they only love God when things are good. But what would happen if we truly understand that if we love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, that we would be able to love the other people? You know, a lot of times we do get selfish, don't we, in our ways and, and in the way we treat people. But we need to love others. We need to take the time for others and get out of the selfish things that sometimes we, we pick on and pick up in our lives. And the problem is that people are not going to love us the way we love ourselves, right? And when this happens, offense comes. Offense comes. There's nothing that we can do to avoid offense. It's going to happen. I think so many times we pray for this perfect environment where offense never comes. Or we pray for the perfect marriage, or the perfect man, the perfect woman, the perfect relationship, when the heart of the matter is this, is that offense is going to come. Somebody's going to get up, not look at you the right way, and some spouse might get up and mess with a coffee pot, and you might get up and not have coffee the way you want. You know what I'm saying? Offense is going to come. Offense is going to come, but how are we going to handle the offense when it comes? If we love God with all our heart, with our soul, with all our mind, then we should be able to throw off any kind of affliction, any kind of hurt, any kind of remark, any kind of pain that comes deep in our soul. We should be able to push it out because we love Jesus. See, when you love him in a certain kind of way, when God has been good to you, when God blesses you, then you don't have time for the nonsense. That, that you could be in, a, in an environment where offense is going to come, where people are going to hurt you, but yet you can walk out that door and say, not today, Satan, not today. I've learned so many times in my life that you got to pick your battles, that you got to pick your battles. There's some things you just have to let go. And not everybody's going to love you the way you want them to love you. Not everybody's going to say the things you want them to say. Not everybody in your ministry as a pastor, come on, somebody, is going to say, oh, Pastor Nate, you, you know, it's not always going to be that way. It's not always going to be easy that your son and your daughter are going to act a certain way that drives you insane, but you still love them, right? You still love them. And so that's what we have to get in our soul and in our mind is that we got to understand 
that the enemy loves to fight there, that he loves to cause conflict because he knows if he can do that, if he can get you to focus so much on what somebody said and what someone did, that it will interfere and it will block the blessings that the Lord has for us. But yet we say, you know, we love God. Praise Jesus. God is good. Oh, here comes so-and-so. Man, I'll tell you what. You know what she did this week? I can't believe she put that on Facebook. Can you believe that? Oh, psh, man, I don't have time for that. And we get all huffed up, puffed up, and we forget about the God who's looking down at us, who said two of the greatest commandments. He said, love me with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. You know, many times I'm quick, or I try to be quick, when someone hurts me or does something to me, I try to stop the thoughts of the enemy right then and there and say, you know what, God, what is going on in their life? What could they possibly be going through that would cause them to respond a certain way? And a lot of times I'll pick up on the fact that someone's hurt them. How many of you know that hurting people hurt people? <laughs> hurting people hurt people. And so when people hurt us, it is hard. But when we love the God, God with all our heart, soul, mind, and we want to do good to our neighbors and love them, what we will do is oftentimes let it come in and let it flow out. It's not worth holding on to. It's not worth getting upset. It's not worth it because all we're doing is we're not, hey, we're not hurting them. We're hurting ourselves. We can't grow. Have you ever tried to not like someone and then go into prayer? Doesn't work. Doesn't work. What would happen if we start loving our enemies? And something even more powerful, what would happen if we start praying for our enemies? Man, whoo, Lord Jesus, I think I've done skipped ahead, whatever, it's okay. If you hear repeat, it's okay. But oftentimes that's what we do. We, we don't want to pray for them, but yet we love God. We want to come to church, put on our happy face, put on our cologne, Get our hair done, look all good, see who has the best outfit. But deep down, we're holding a fence in our heart over someone that has hurt us and things that we can't let go and things that we rehearse in our mind day in and day out. But you know what I know today and I'm so reminded of every time I feel hurt, every time affliction comes, every time somebody voices their opinion, how they don't agree with something that I did, I stop for a minute and I begin to praise God for who he is. And I begin to say, hey God, you know one thing that I love about you is that you, you always love me, that your love will never ever change, God. And that Lord, if I offend you, you don't hold on to it, you don't hold grudges, you don't try to get even, but God, you love me in a way, Lord, that I don't deserve. I want to love someone today that probably doesn't even do, want, that doesn't deserve it. It's right. It doesn't deserve what the love that I want to give them, but I want to live that kind of life. I, I don't know about you, but I hope that you can walk into an environment where people have just treated you. I'm not saying you got to let them walk all over you. No, but at the same time, you can love them in a way that God loved his enemies. And that's what I believe this world so desperately needs right now. We need to love each other. There's a lot of hate. There's a lot of people pointing the fingers. But what would happen if we just start loving everybody? Because the fence is going to come, isn't it? The fence is going to come in our life. There's nothing that we can do to escape it. It's going to come. In fact, in, that, in, uh, in Luke chapter 2 or verse 17, or sorry, chapter 17, verse 2, it said, it would be better for them to be thrown into a sea with a millstone tied around their neck than to call someone to stumble. God said they're going down. The people who offended you, they're going down. Not because you were offended, but because you offended one of mine. He says, aren't you glad you were one of his today? If I am one of his, I don't have to defend myself because God has already going to do something special for you. That's another thing that I've learned. I don't have to fight people. I don't have to try to get even. I don't have to have the last word. I've learned through the years and through ministry that a lot of times if I just keep my mouth shut, come on somebody, if I just keep my mouth shut and I just keep doing what God's called me to do and I just keep getting in his presence and I just keep loving on people and I just see them coming and just say, oh Lord Jesus, help me. I pray for the anointing right now to fall all over me, God. Lord, help me smile at them when they don't think I'm going to, because nothing's going to eat somebody up more than if you start smiling at them and doing things that they know they don't deserve back. But that's what makes us different. 
That's what makes us the one who loves God with all your heart, soul, and mind. That's what makes us so different is because we, we love people in a way that no one else can understand because we have God's love flowing in us and through us. That's why it's so important what we bring in and how we take it out and not hold on to it because offense is going to come. So how can we work through this? Number one, I'm going to keep it simple today. Number one, stop blocking your blessing. Stop blocking your blessing. Hey, I get these calls on my phone that drive me insane, these telemarketers that keep calling and calling and calling. And the other day, they kept calling and calling and calling, so I, I forgot that I could block the call, duh. So I took my phone out and blocked the call. I believe that somebody today keeps blocking the call of Jesus on your life. You keep hitting the block button because all you're doing is looking at how someone hurt you and what somebody did to you. And God is saying, hey, if you want my blessings to flow, you got to stop hitting the block button because what you're taking in, you're holding on to and you're not letting it go out. And when that happens, all we're doing is allowing things to build up in our heart. And what we're doing is we're basically hitting the block button from what God wants to say and how God wants to move in our life. I wonder today, are you hitting the block button? Sometimes we hit the block button on God and we don't even know we're doing it. And he's saying, you know what? I have so many blessings for you. I want to do so many things in your life, but how can I do that if there's things on the inside that have not yet come out? I wonder, what are you feeling? It's easy to hold it in our heart, isn't it? All we're doing is hurting ourselves. God's saying, you got to get it out. You got to get it out. Say, you got to get it out. And when we are spiritually clogged up and we spiritually hold on to these things, then what affects our heart is going to come out of our mouth. I talked a lot about this. I think it was a couple weeks ago that we got to guard our heart because what comes in is eventually going to come out. And so when you're all clogged up inside, you know, I can't stand getting in a shower and taking a shower and, and it be all clogged up. I know I'm going to get a little gross here today, but, you know, it, it gets the point across. When you're trying to take a shower, you're like you're standing in a puddle of water, you know. And it's like, good Lord, I got to get some Drano. You get the Drano going, let it sit for a while, boom, turn the water on, the bad boy goes flowing out. Some of you need some Drano in your life right now. You need some Drano because all these things you've collected all these hurts, all these pains, all these comments, all these things that people have said to you, maybe it's even God. Maybe he's the one that you're not loving the way you need to love because you're holding on to the prayers that haven't been answered yet. So all these things you're picking up, whether you want to or not, wonder why you feel so bad, wonder why you can't hear from God, wonder why the blessings have, oh, I see their bl God's blessing so-and-so, well, how come God's not blessing me? Why don't you take time to examine your heart because we're all guilty at some time or another having things in there that clogs it up. But I don't want to live a life like that. I want to live a life that what comes in, meaning the things that people say, the, the actions that they take, that I'm able to say, God, you have to deal with it. And by the precious blood that was shed at Calvary, I know, I know who I serve. And God, you will fight the battle for me. I don't have to say a word, God. All I need to do is rest in you. You know, so many times at night I get in my bed. I don't know what y'all do before you go to bed, but when I get in my bed, I start talking to the Lord. And I start talking to him about my day. And I was crawling into bed last night. I said, God, I love you so much. And God, I know that you have blessed me beyond what I deserve. But God, I pray, Lord, that any thing that would try to come into my heart to God, it would flow out, it would be released. I don't want to do anything, Lord, that blocks me from hearing you. I don't want to do anything, God. And when I, when I crawl into bed, I just start talking to him about how I feel. I just start talking to him about, about what I need in my life. I start talking to him about the prayers I need him to answer. And as I talk to him, I realize and I feel like his arms, I just picture his arms just hold me in the bed, snuggling up against me saying, hey, Dana, it's going to be okay, Dana. It's going to be okay, Dana. I I love you unconditionally, Dana. Dana, there's nothing you have to worry about. Dana, I've got it all under control, honey. I'm going to fight the battle for you. You just need to keep your mouth shut. I'm going to fight it for you. I know the ones who have offended you. I know the ones who have hurt you. I know the people who has missed, have walked out on you. I know those people. But if you just let me fight the battle wonder how many times we do that. We try to 
put it in our own mind and our own thoughts, and we try, to, we try to figure it all out. But I want his blessings to flow in my life. I don't want to do anything that would come in and block up the flow of the blessings that Jesus has for us. Which leads me to my next one. Y'all all right out there? Number two, we got to confront what you can't release. You got to confront what you can't release. When something is wrong, we got to confront it because you won't be able to release what you can't confront. Once we stop and apologize, it gives us release. Oh, here we go. I said the word apologize. Man, that's the sermon just in itself. Because one thing that I've learned and how I've grown and developed in the Lord and through the Lord and still have a lot of learning and growing to do, but I've learned that sometimes it means you got to be the one to apologize even when you don't feel like you did anything wrong. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus. I couldn't wait to get to this point right here. But sometimes we got to apologize. And what we'll find is when we confront it and we apologize, what it does it releases anything inside of us. Because when we hold on to it and we allow bitterness to come in, all we're doing is hurting ourselves. And God is saying, look, I know the ones. I see the things that are happening. But you need to be the bigger person and love them like I love you. I wonder who are the people in your life today that maybe you need to apologize to. You know, sometimes we get so angry, don't we? We get so angry when people hurt us. And, you know, one thing I've learned about anger, it can be good and it can be bad. Sometimes anger is good because when someone says something to me or tries to tell me I can't do something, oh, honey, that anger is going to help me want to do even more and do it even better than I ever did before. You know, the people that say, oh, you can't do that. Oh, did you hear about so-and-so trying to do that? Shit, they can't do They don't have what it takes some of you grew up in school and you had teachers say that to you. Teachers that said, oh, you could never do nothing. You're not smart enough. You're not good enough. You can't do that. Yep, but you know what? You kept rehearsing that in your mind. It was something deep within you that you gave to God. And what he's done is given you the blessings and given you the anointing to push through any of those kinds of comments. But you had to confront it and say, God, these things hurt me. God, I can't keep living a life like this. All I know is who you are. All I know is how you've created me to be. God, all I know is that you have a will and a way for my life. So God, anything that comes against me, I want to release to you right now. We've got to get rid of it because when we don't, it's going to attack us on the inside. We got to stand up and resist some things, but at the same time, thank the Lord that he's putting you through the things because it's when we go through things that hurt us that are actually good for us, that actually teach us something and help us grow and mature in God, but we got to get rid of us. We gotta get rid of it. How many know that critics are gonna come and go? Critics are gonna come and go. You know, uh, coming into this church, I had a lot of people who said that it would never happen. I had a lot of people who I found out later that I had grew up with in the church that said I could never do it. And I got word got to me that they that they thought that it would just be a matter of time before uh, the door shut over here. I remember going into the gym and get, being in a class and people say, oh, I saw on Facebook, you're going to start, yeah, yeah. And then I could see them whispering in the back of the class to somebody else. But that's all right, you know what, I took the anger and the things I was feeling inside and I got in that bike class and I started pedaling even harder. And I started going, I said, you know what, God, they don't know the kind of God I serve. You know what, no, I can't do it, you hoo no, I can't do it. But there's one that works in me and through me, there's one that I serve that can do it. See, that's what they don't know is, no, I can't by myself, no. But through him, I can. I can do all things. Through him, you can do all things. No matter what people say, but you know what we do? Is we hold on to the opinions of others. We hold on to it, and we let it control us. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. But first, I'm going to talk to you for a minute about something that happened to me. I, uh, I, the other day, I was trying to clean up some spots on the carpet. <laughs> In fact, I called Anthony. I hear Anthony back there. Hey, Anthony, Anthony, if you need a carpet cleaner, Anthony is awesome. Uh, he came over and helped clean it. But before he did, I, I, was, I was thinking to myself, man, I got to get some of these spots up before Anthony comes. Because I don't want him to see some of these spots on my carpet. 
So I, I went looking real quick, and I was trying to find some carpet cleaner, <laughs> and I found some. And I looked on the instructions on the back, and on the instructions back it said, um, don't let, as soon as the stain hits the ground, uh, hurry and apply the solution to it. Because if the stain sits on the ground, it's, it's going to be harder to get up. It's going to set in. See, some of you have allowed some things to come in your life, and you've been letting it sit there. And what it's done, and you haven't confronted it, and you haven't released it, so all that it has done is gotten deep within you. And you're trying to remove it, and you're trying to come to church, and you're trying to pray it up, and you're trying to do good and bring some Dunkin' Donuts into work. But meanwhile, it's still there, and you've let it sit for so long and how many of you know when a stain gets on your carpet you got to get the carpet cleaner right away to get it up and I wonder today how many of you have let it sit for so long that it's become a part of who you are and you've let it affect every part of your being from being depressed being sad having anxiety not being able to trust other people wanting to talk about other people and realizing the whole time you know what I've had I bet in the last six months, I've had more people's opinions than I care to take in my mind. Opinions about the church opening. Opinions on how we do things. Oh, I could just keep going on and on and on and on. But you know what? Again, what comes in, you've got to let it flow out. I could easily take those opinions and let it control me, and this church probably would have never been open right now. We all would be still sitting, you know, watching TV. You, you know what I'm saying? But, but we've got to learn that the opinions that come around us don't have to control us. Just like that stain on the carpet that day, it, I, you know, I got it up as quickly as I could. And then Anthony came in, took that stain cleaner, and boy, it just came right up. That's how God is when he works in situations in our life that have been sitting so long and stained our heart and stained our soul. And God's coming in with a wet vac today. He's saying, you know what? Let me take it. I'm, I'm the best picker upper there is. I could take any kind of dirt, any kind of hurt that's in your life and remove it right up. Anything that's on the surface, I can come in and take it out. Y'all okay with me today? <laughs> I told you it's different, but it's good. Say it's good. The last but not least. Least as we close it up today, as the musicians come forward, is don't let offense control you. Don't let offense, and let's just put the opinions of others, control you. If I let every offense that came my way and every opinion that people had to say about this pastor right here, then I would never, ever do anything. Some of you are stuck where you're at because you've let offense and hurt, and the opinions of others, and the critics that people can be, get deep down in your heart, and you've let it control you instead of letting God control the offense. I was thinking about Jesus, you know, I like to always close out with something I was thinking about, man, how many times was Jesus offended? I don't have this in my notes to read to you, I'm going to read you something else, but I just thought about what it what must have been like to, you know, be going to be crucified on the cross. And talking about people offending you and hurting you and getting up there. But yet, he loved us so much. God loved us so much that he gave his only son to die on that cross. He loved us so much. Aren't you glad that he loved us so much to do that for us? That we could live for him forever. Those who love him, those that know him. You know, Jesus again, was no stranger to offense. People were constantly trying to trap him into offense. In Second Peter, it says that they hurled insults at him and hurt him. But you know what he did? He entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He didn't entrust his life. He didn't give his life, his way to some opinion and false accusations. He entrusted his life to the one who was in control of his life. He knew other people's opinions didn't have to affect him. We all are going to learn how to let go of offense. But you know what? It's a process. Offense is going to come. Offense is going to happen today. Maybe you came in today and the whole reason why you came to church is you've been hurt. Maybe some of you, you can't even make a decision because of all the things you've carried over the years, all the offense, the hurt, the pain, 
the, the people in your life that constantly, no matter how hard you try, just so negative and so um, just voice their opinions all the time. And you're like, could you just please be quiet? But God has put that person in your life for a reason. And he's telling you today, look, I can handle any kind of naysayer there is. I can handle any kind of negative person. I can handle any critic. I can handle any opinion that people throw at you. But all you got to do is remember that I'm the one who loves you. I'm the one who loves you. And when you love me with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, then you can experience what true love is. But until then, you got to let it not only come in, what people say. You're going to hear it, but what are you going to do with it? I'm determined today I'm going to flow that bad boy right out of me. I don't want any kind of blockages. I don't want anything in my way. I just want to be able to serve God in the most peaceful, delightful way that there is. I don't want to wake up every day feeling downcasted. I don't want to wake up every day carrying the hurt around and all hunched over with it. I want to be able to say, God, I love you for who you are. And God, I know people offended you, but my goodness, God, you gave your life for us. That's the kind of love that I want to have for people who constantly offend me. Or maybe people just offend you here and there. Whatever the case may be, let's start changing our perspective on it. Let's start going in and loving God more so that we can put up with other people that we sometimes don't even, or let's just put it this way, they're unlovable. But God can give us what we need. Are y'all still okay with me this morning? Will you stand to your feet this morning? Let's pray. Father, right now, God, we release and we confront anything that's in our heart today. God, your word tells us that we are to forgive people. So today, God, we know that the enemy would like to fight. Today, God, we know that the enemy would try to uh, bring chaos in our relationships with one another. But today, God, we bind the forces of hell. Today, God, we come against the one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And in Jesus' name, God, we declare victory.